So 2022 has started off in a really good way. Hello, this is Deflector, a new isometric bullet hell roguelite. I'm going to leave the description as short as that because you'll see for yourself all of the different inspirations and maybe get an idea for the game once we get in. I think trying to define a game by genre can become so tedious and difficult that at one point you just got to stop and say, I'll just show you instead. Now I'm going to apologize preemptively in advance because this could be a long one because I got a lot of explaining to do and I got a run to do. So let's dive straight in and talk about what this game is. It is a isometric rogue that takes place, from what I can understand, in a lab in like petri dishes or sample dishes and you are playing in a microscopic world. That's, that's the bare bones basic what I'm going to explain, what you're seeing visually. Now, what we do have is a cast of characters i've unlocked all of them these three on the far right are not unlocked normally at the start you begin with this dude on the far left who we'll play with this time around uh, for this run however very similar to something like in risk of rain 2 you'll see a lot of parallels to risk of rain 2 all of the characters have these unlockable achievements or mini quests that are basically them unlocking more power for themselves and for your overall account so some of these things, for example, Bomberman and uh, Healing Bullets, when you unlock these achievements or beat them on these characters, you have permanent progression for all of the characters on the entire account. Moving over here into research, we have the standard talent tree grid, where you fill things in, for example, a second life, uh, bonus healing, uh, more health restored after you beat a world, stuff like that. The adaptability tree is all about getting some money at the start, getting discounts at the shop, stuff like that. And mutation makes all of your power-ups more, more effective, basically, and your chance to find stronger power-ups. For example, finding a special mutation, higher chance of getting that, etc. So you already have talent tree stuff, you've got permanent unlocks, and you've got character unlocks, which happen through quests. You've got different quests in the game. You complete a quest, you unlock a character. I've completed all the quests that are available right now in Early Access, so I have all the characters. Uh, first of which, Eradicator, or as I like to call him, the Dorito Man because he has a giant, <laughs> delicious-looking Chief Supreme Dorito on this right arm, but comes with a boomerang. Uh, I'm, I'm actually blown away. My, my inner Aussie is, is a little bit excited that the main dude that you start with is a boomerang specialist. You can see up here. We also have the Slasher, uh, tried and true sword man right here. We have the Gunslinger. Now, this is very Risk of Rain 2 right here. I looked at this design, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is an homage right now. This, this looks... This looks like a combination of Ratchet and Clank and Risk of Rain 2, I love it. And then finally, last but not least, you have Spark. Now, all of these characters have brilliant designs. They all play incredibly differently to give you a nice, unique experience with each character. They all play differently. They all want you to do different things. We are going to start with the Eradicator. We'll jump in and I will show you guys what this is all about because I've been like addicted to this for the past three or so days since the, the I think it was the Berserker run that I recently released. I said in that video I was going to try this game out, and I, I started playing it literally the day after I recorded it. So by the time you guys saw that video, I was already two days in deep on this. Now, we have different variants. Another way you can customize your runs, you need to unlock these by completing the achievements for the characters I mentioned earlier. But for this, we're going to go with Alpha, which is the tried and true, normal, default way to play your characters. They'll all come with the Alpha variant unlocked automatically. The, the two extra variants are just other ways of playing main hub this is where you select the world you go to you are able to choose what order you wish to advance in there are three worlds available right now each with a final boss at the end each with a full path that you go down just showing you real quick right now the way that mobility works is isometric the three little little glowing diamonds underneath my character represent dashes similar to something like curse of the dead gods familiar with that but it's a nice visual way to see your evasion and whether or not it's available right now. You've got full omnidirectional dashing. You can spam dash if you want, but you're just gonna run out of dashes sooner that way. So be uh, a little bit, you know, sparing with your dashes. You have a basic attack for the boomerang guy. That just means throw the boomerang out and it will spin and come back. You can throw it and then run away and lure it back towards you. But on the secondary attack, you have this little bumper push. Now this is the main gimmick of the game. This is why it's called Deflector because it is a bullet hell game, and whenever you do this, you knock enemy projectiles back. You can deflect them back into your enemies, or just knock them away if they're closing in on you. And something unique that the boomerang guy can do here is he can actually deflect his own boomerang, which gives it more distance, 
and in depending on what variations you're playing in, more damage. It also builds up his meter. Once his meter is full, you can activate it. It's like a super meter and he gains access to a second boomerang that he can throw out. You can sit here and bounce them both around. You can throw them in opposing directions and try and multitask, hitting different dudes from different sides. It's a lot of fun, but for now, let's get straight in. And I think I'll start with the Living Entrails world and get right into it and show you guys what we're looking at here. So, the tried and true rogue, we're going to start with a mutation here. I've unlocked this from the permanent progression tree. I'm allowed to get one of these at the start. Deflect burst, this is where we get our upgrades for our run. If I hold Z, I can show you this grid, this DNA table. We are, we are modifying our little character with different types of DNA. We are splicing to give him different power-ups. Now, over here, we'll have these two different uh, power-up boons, as it were, over here. Parry power bullets deflected by mutations have a chance to deal extra damage, or bullets deflected by linked mutations have a chance of not being deflected and instead absorbed and heal. Now, you can see that this grid separates from the middle and it goes over towards these, and what you want to do is pick and choose your power-ups based on what spaces they want to give. So, for example, Deflect Burst will push you in every direction except lower right. So, if I select the burst, it's up here, and I can place it wherever I want down here in these open spaces. I'm going to put it uh, over here next to pushing towards parry power, and I'll work my way up here. And you can see the 0 out of 5 in the lower right means that the more of these you have surrounding it, the more power you give it. You can see right there the bonus. The amount of adjacent mutations increases the chance of the alteration being triggered. So your power-ups are very much a way of building yourself. What do you want to go for? What do you want to do? And here we have the tried and true roguelite uh, roadmap. Your directional grid, your where do we want to go? We have main boss at the end. We have a little uh, legend up here telling us what all the different areas mean. You've got regular combat, elite combat. That was my watch on the table, I apologize. We have objectives, cell shops, bosses, and challenge rooms. So these are both regular. You can see here, we can see the rewards. Health orb. This I'm just starting off, I'm on full life, so instead I'm going to come over here and get DNA orb. The DNA is what you use for your permanent progression once you are finished with a run and you leave. So, we are in. We can see enemies. I'm going to start bouncing this boomerang. Oh, red balls. Anything red you can deflect. You see here we deflected it back at our opponent and he died as a result. Throw the boomerang, deflect it into him, he dies. If it's yellow, however, you cannot deflect it. In this game, red is what you want to be able to push back. Yellow is a special projectile that basically you need to avoid. However, if you are good enough, you can just dodge all the yellow, deflect as many of the red as possible, and you get massive benefits. We have damage mutations, support mutations, and deflect mutations. Kind of self-explanatory, deflect mutations boost and affect the way that your deflect mechanic works. The support ones range from shielding to life and, and things like that. And damage is just outright damage. It'll, it'll increase your normal damage. It'll give you special damaging effects. I'm going to pop up here and grab another one of these because I like the damaging ones. The burst that we grabbed at the start means every time I deflect something, I do a big explosion of bonus damage out the front, which is why these guys are getting hurt for so much more damage. It's a very, very good mutation and it's very good to show off. Uh, these little dudes here explode. So if I, if I annoy him and then run away, he's going to rush at me and blow up. They're little kamikaze dudes. I don't want to deal with them. You've got this worm grub dude over here. It doesn't matter. There is contact damage. Be careful not to touch your opponents. However, there are ways to prevent contact damage if you get the right support item. But baseline, there is contact damage. We have found a special type of mutation right here. You can see up in the upper right, you've got the red is damage, blue is deflect, green is support. Purple is special. These are rare. These are kind of like your pseudo legendary discovery so getting this on the first major room is a pretty good find projectile storm while your active skill is charged every deflect has a chance to release several projectiles that damage nearby enemies sounds amazing let's take it. it also helps us push towards our first goal the parry power and then we leave and progress even further the rooms start off very easy um and kind of lean you in because the way that you need to do this is for this particular character you're going to get used to multitasking. You want to be able to push the boomerang because the boomerang is going to do more. You run faster while your boomerang is out and you do more damage because you're able to get more distance and the boomerang just hits harder. Um, and you can get a lot of that burst damage that I've got from my, my deflect mechanic. If I want, I can activate my special by pressing E, which gives me double boomerangs. It does a lot of damage. It's basically just double damage um, while it's active because you get two boomerangs. Now, we have a core mutation. This right here is just basically giving us 
a free upgrade to either damage, life, things like that. It's it's a mutation. It's base stats, though. It's not going to give me a special effect like the missiles. It's going to give me a stat increase. Now, cell orbs, these are the currencies. You can see them up here, 400. They're for the shops. And there's the DNA that we had last time. So instead, I'm going to come up here because we're moving towards a shop. And I'd like to come to a shop and show you guys that. Deflect. I have not seen the missiles come out yet, unless you guys have the projectiles. Oh. Oh, I'm doing a bunch of deflecting. If it's red, you can bounce it. Spit. Go ahead. Bounce them all back into his face. Look at that. Now, you may have noticed I have yet to really start dodging and moving and schmoving and doing all the grooving. That's because in the first area, you can do it in any order, like I said. Of course, the bones are going to come up and, and block me right there. You can do these areas in any order. The areas have different enemies. They have a different boss at the end. An offensive mutation or a vitality mutation. I told you this is basically stats. So boost damage, boost max life. They've both got the exact same forking patterns. So I'm going to grab the damage one. And if I put this damage one up here, it's going to fill this spot and then open up the left and right sides, which means I can keep a grid going around my parry power. This is actually very good for us. More damage, keep the grid open, keep it alive. Good, I like it. The shop, shop time. Come into the store, we've got 450 of our little DNAs, uh, of our little germ data, as I like to call it sometimes. We could buy more DNA orbs for permanent progression. We could buy more stats, or I could buy a damage mutation. So what I might do, because I've got enough for two purchases, I'll get some DNA stuff. I just pressed my E instead of my F. Old habits die hard. And buy the core mutation, which is another offensive mutation, which also has an up directional, so I can do that and put that there. You know me, I'm all about damage. If I can get more damage, I'm, I'm happy. Now, is this our first elite room? Right. Elite combat, we get a support mutation for finishing this. Let's go. Now, something that I need to draw attention to is the style, the art direction, the music especially. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna sound uh, a little bit weird saying this, but obviously we all know that music is subjective and your taste in music may not be everyone else's taste in music. However, something that I, I love and, and feel the need to talk about when it comes to games or any kind of media is that music can give something personality. It can give something charm. It can give something additive that wasn't there before or something that is special. You look at things like Doom, right? Everyone loves Doom for the soundtrack, Guilty Gear for the soundtrack, um, Hades. Hades had an amazing soundtrack. Everyone loves the music. Imagine these these games or these these properties if they didn't have the soundtracks they did. They'd still be good, but there's, there's a bit of heart and soul. There's a bit of charm missing. Uh, let me put this in real quick. Using your active skill deploys protective dome. That's okay. Or, taking damage causes me to release a shield wall that deflects bullets. I'd rather get that real quick. And if I stick this in any of my current active areas, it's not going to advance this. I want to go up this way or get this one going up this way. So instead, I'm going to start moving over towards this. And I can start filling this in with ones that are relevant and move towards this with any ones that aren't relevant for that. But like I'm saying about music, there is so much charm and so much importance that can come from a good soundtrack, right? From good music. And this game has so much personality in its soundtrack. I love it. I've been gushing over the soundtrack for this all weekend while I've been playing it. And I I, I think it's it's just it's stellar. It's it's incredible. It's amazing. I do have the music turned down lower than I have had on stream because I need you guys to be able to hear me. But if you can make out the soundtrack in between my ramblings, it's 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 a bop. Every area has like a different sound to it. Some areas have this this powerful, bassy, guttural metal sound. Others have more of a, a synthetic, unreal kind of sound to it. It's it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous the sound design that they've gone with on this. And and also, if you guys haven't noticed, the, the visuals, it just, it looks so stylized. This is our first challenge room. Um, the challenge rooms give you a random penalty. Enemies have a chance to fire non-deflectable bullets. So basic enemies. Now there are elite enemies. Elite enemies you can identify by an icon above their heads. What this basically means is that enemies can function similar to elites because elite enemies will sometimes fire off yellow projectiles that cannot be deflected. You may have saw some yellow uh, projectiles in that last room that I was in. You cannot deflect them, dodge them, move around them, do whatever you need to do. Come up here and get these cell orbs real quick. And what my objective is, is to move through the first area nice and quick. I'm, I keep missing my, my boomerangs. Now, bear in mind, because I know some of you are going to ask, the other characters do not play the same as this in the least. They don't have boomerangs, they don't do the same thing. Sword guy has a sword, he actually can melee. He feels very uh, tried and true to a to a 
a combat style that you might be more used to with something like a, a combat isometric game. Um, however, you've got Sword Dude, you've got Gun Guy, and you've got Spark, who is very unique. The girl character, very unique. Uh, we'll get to them eventually. What I want to do is at least do a video covering each character. Now this right here, I wonder if I should do a quest for you guys. Because if I come to the journal, these are all the discoveries. These are all of the quests. And these are how you unlock new characters. You can basically follow these steps. You'll discover these objectives on the map. They are marked as objectives on the map. And if you go to them, they are special rooms that have special either story elements or just beats that happen throughout the areas. And for this one right here, we have a jailer who has a... I can't even do it now. I've never come back here. Turns out you can only do it once until the story's done, then it's done. But this big jailer NPC, this really big cool looking dude, had a prisoner here and basically I, I rescue the prisoner and get him home. And by getting him home in one piece, I'm rewarded with a new character unlock. Unfortunately, I've completed that quest. No need to do it again, so let's just move on. I'll come down here and get the DNA orb, more permanent progression. I want to unlock more stuff back at home so that I become more overall powerful. I'm going to activate my special. The specials reload really quickly. Um, some characters will reload their specials faster than others, but deflecting your, either your own projectiles for Boomerang Guy or deflecting enemy projectiles can boost your special meter build incredibly quick, so much so that it's already re turned off cooldown. So, what the hell, let's throw out some more boomerangs. And watch out for the mouthies, these alien looking xenomorph monstrosities trying to get us with the big sucky tongue. No thank you, no biting, no nibbling here. Throw a boomerang, bounce, bounce, bounce. Bounce, 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 boomerang kills that guy. Grab our reward, we're out of here. And then moving forward, do I want stats or do I want to do an elite room and grab some DNA? I'd actually like some stats. It will lead to a challenge room afterwards, so we keep some difficulty here and get some good rewards afterwards. But I would like stats. These little arrow looking things, they, they shatter into more and more projectiles. That's okay. I'm going to throw my boomerang and, and be an absolute nightmare to these guys. Zip up here. No, bounce it. I got touched. They split. They split and one of the little tiny splits got me. I didn't see it. Now, even if you deflect them, they still split, so you got to be careful. Tongue. No. You can see there's there's the... Uh, uh, the highlighted spots on the ground. The uh, telegraphed areas. Avoid, avoid those, obviously. You know, you guys are gamers, I know. Avoid the areas. Dodge, dodge. And this is just getting warmed up, right? The idea is some people complain that the game is too difficult. Others complain that the game is too easy. The difficulty will come, you know, to you. There are no ways to really adjust difficulty that I've seen besides maybe just pick rooms that aren't difficult. You know, don't take challenge rooms, don't take elite rooms if you can help it. However, the idea is if you build yourself appropriately, the runs shouldn't be too difficult by the time you get to the end. Although I will be honest, there are some bosses that are a little bit rough that can be a little bit difficult. Enemies spawn a blood bomb when they die. The blood bombs are the kamikaze dudes that run at you. You can see it's called Parasite Room up the top there. Um, that sucks for us because parasites are awful to deal with and I'm hoping I'm kind of playing this So that as these main enemies die the parasites that spawn Behind the little dude right there running at me that they die straight away because they've got low life and Yep kill him we can get rid of them at the same time What I should do is pop my special and get double boomerang action going there we go. That's good. That's good. That's good that's real good. Throw them out. Also highlights enemies with a little yellow glow in case you're having a hard time seeing them in the background. So your special kind of kind of does a few things for you right there. I love it. Zip down here. Oh, look, little, little kamikaze dude trying to come. You can't come at me, dude. You're running at me? Uh, bam. And yes, yes, before you ask, aiming the bullets is something you've got to do. You can see I've got my cursor on the screen. I'm controlling this by mouse and keyboard. There is controller support. Uh, however, I find it easier to aim with my mouse, so when they shoot bullets, if I aim it up, I'm shooting the bullets in an upwards direction. If I aim it straight into his face, he gets hit. So there's an element of, of mobility. It's, it's a bullet hell where you got to dodge and aim and not get hit and, and manage your own projectile at the same time. There's a lot of elements to it. There's a, there's a good deal of micromanagement here, but I don't want that to sound like a, a, a thing that puts you off. Don't worry. It'll take maybe like a couple of runs to get used to the mechanics. With any game, you've got to get used to the controls, you know. Oh, I didn't, you know, the, the old 
the old grade school complaint, you know, you lose a game and you say, I'm just getting used to the controls. I, I wasn't, I didn't know what I was pressing. I got to get used to it, dude. You got an advantage on me here. You got to give me a chance. Same deal. Same logic, you know, got to get used to the controls. Come down here. The arrows will tell me where they, these frog things, by the way, my chat's been dealing with me complaining about these the entire stream over the weekend, all my streams. Because I've, I've been playing this, like, I've got 10 hours already in this game, just over the weekend on stream. But those frog-style enemies will go underground, pop up in a random location, and spit balls. And sometimes I lose track of where they are, and they hit me. They have a really good track record for taking taking care of some of my life. Now, boss fight time. Uh, like I said, there's a boss at the end of every one of these areas. This is the boss of the, was it, Living Flesh? Nice big mans. Look at big mans here. Oh, yeah, you, you're cute. He's cutie. He's a cutie. Now, bullet hell fight. Of course. Yellow orb. Couldn't deflect it. I tried to dash, though, but I was holding the wrong direction. You can dash through. You can do... All I'm just going to throw my double boomerang. Ah, he's going to try and slam on me and be really rude. I'm just going to run in eccentric circles. Eccentric circles. He's taking a lot of damage. He summons a bone wall. Oh, what, what, what? He's doing it again. Repeating. Oh, repeat offender right here. He's also shooting out these... See the red spots? You can deflect the red spots. It's giving you... You can either choose to dash over the, the, the spots, or you can deflect them, like I'm doing right now. You can deflect, jump up here, deflect. Now, remember, deflecting gives you super meter. I can activate my super again. So you have options. I could dash through if I want. Do I want to deflect, or do I want to dash? You can do whatever you want. And if you've built yourself to do a lot of damage like I just did, and you, you, you know how to bounce your boomerang back and forth, you can take care of him pretty quick before most of his mechanics even start to happen. There were whole parts of that fight that we didn't see right there. Um, that you guys, if you pick up this game, you might see. Now this right here is a healing station. Um, in the beginning it will only heal for maybe like, what, was it 30 or 40 life? But you can upgrade this using your upgrade resources back at the main hub. Mine is almost completely upgraded. I think this gives like a hundred life back for me now, or something close to it. So I lost like, what, a quarter of my life by the time I got to the end of that area? And I've just healed it all back up to full. So it's less about uh, dying to the fact that you have low life at the end of a boss fight, because you can probably get your life back up, but the areas might be an issue. Now, the magnetic fields. Whole new area, let's go. Second area, let us begin. I have a permanent upgrade still that lets me get a free mutation at the beginning of each new area. Explosive metabolism or protective deflect. We have a support option here. Small reduction to incoming damage for a few seconds every time you deflect a projectile. Sounds good. I deflect a lot. Or take damage, release a burst of a wave. We've already got one of those. You can stack them, and I believe the effect just gets stronger. However, I want the protective deflect because it's going to do two things for me. It's going to let me try and finish up parry power, um, which I didn't need now that I think about it because I could always put one here. But keeping that guaranteed availability right there Something I want, but I also want to have uh, this maxed out pretty ASAP. I like parry power. Uh, and then we'll work towards healing bullets. Which, healing bullets is a special um, upgrade that I had to complete a challenge on this character in order to unlock. So whenever you unlock these specialties... Can I see them now? I can't see them, can I? I don't think I can. I need to go back to the main menu. But for completing these challenges, you can get these, these upgrades that other characters can benefit from. Like I said in the beginning, it's it's account progression. So you can get things like the variations that the individual characters come with to play a bit differently, or you can get permanency upgrades that makes everyone better. So if you've got a favorite character and you want your favorite character to perform at their absolute best, guess what? It might be in your better interest to have a go at some of the other characters and try and unlock the secrets that they have in order to make them as powerful as they can be. We'll grab this last damage up. I've got a lot of damage up right here. Now, parry power is maxed out. There's no need to fill up around here anymore. Parry power is done. Bullets deflected by mutations have a chance of dealing additional damage. Now, the funny thing is, we don't really have any mutations that specifically deflect on their own. But if we get some, we're going to have a pretty high chance of doing that. Now, deflect mutation. Let's go and grab one. <laughs> Let's go and try and grab some deflect mutations. This area right here, really completely different atmosphere, right? Completely different atmosphere. We've got new enemy types. We've got these really annoying dudes that have shields on them. We've got these guys that shoot out zigzag pattern things that just, just all over the screen and become really aggressively annoying when there's too many of them over there. Bounce, and you'll see his shield actually bounce bullets back as well. So you're kind of playing uh, a little bit of ping pong, table tennis, badminton, you know, name your flavor. 
how did I not get hit by something there? I, 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 I licked that thing on the side of its cheek. I, I pulled a Bruno. I, I cruised up and licked his cheek, and I'm like, hmm, metal. Get bopped. And once again, the music. The music has completely changed style. It kind of reminds me of like a weird early 90s like grunge kind of sound. I don't know. It's it's, it's interesting. Like a, like a, 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 a hip-hop, new metal kind of grungy feel. Now, Bones from above. Bones eventually appear in the room, deflect them to cause them to fall from the sky, or obtain a shield after deflecting eight times. I am thinking, because I need to go up, up a left, and reach the healing bullets. This will not help me get there. Instant shield will. Let's push towards healing bullets. And you may want the, the different mutations. If you want to take the bones in that situation, you can, because you will probably get more than enough different mutation options. Oh, oh, oh. Chargey boy. The chargey boys... My chat understand that I have a, a love-hate relationship with Chargy Boys. They are very annoying. Those enemies are shooting missiles. But like I said, you can most definitely get enough mutations to have options. If you really want something, take it. You'll probably fill out the rest of your grid in no time anyway. But for me, I'd rather just fill it as soon as possible. These, these missiles, they home. And yes, before you ask, you can get elite versions of these dudes that shoot yellow missiles that home. You have to just avoid them until they go away. It adds a... A nice bit of anxiety to the run, I will say. Do you have to avoid yellow missiles? Where is this last? Oh, there you are. Die, little dude. Grab the plus 50. And we'll grab some cell orbs over here. Followed by a challenge room, I believe. Oh, listen to it go in, dude. The music. It's so good. If you saw the, the King run recently, I actually used the theme for the boss of this area as music during one of the, the uh, during a wave room. I'm getting hit while I'm thinking here. I need to pay attention to what the enemies around me are doing. But of course I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm just, I'm, I'm jamming to the music. I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing myself talk in, the, in my own head. And I'm getting distracted. Instead, let's blow these guys up and then, and then, Find this last enemy that wants to be aloof. There, die. Give me my, my little gems, my little <laughs> gems, my germs. Give me my cells. Challenge room, a laser chases you around the room. So this laser, don't let it hit you. Let's activate our big special move and try and kill this room as quickly as possible. Which, yes, I could have refilled my super meter a whole bunch. Whoa, that was close. And I'm forgetting to use it. I just, I don't, I'm trying to not kill rooms super quickly so you guys can actually see the environments and see the enemies but I of course forget that as I as I make my way through the run um, enemies you get more waves of enemies the way that the game tries to improve difficulty is to put more enemies on the screen basically more enemies means more projectiles means more difficulty deflecting bullets which means more chance of you getting hit and dying no thank you uh, this little laser chasing me is actually giving me a little bit of a a workout right here. I, I don't like having to run in eccentric circles when I don't really need to, but fine, I'll do it. I've got 980 of my resource to spend, and there's a shop right in front of me. Let's come in here and buy something nice. I could buy some more life. Yeah, I'm okay with what I've got. Now, he's got an extra an extra fourth sh uh, shop slot here, thanks to an upgrade, a permanent upgrade back at home. Thank you, you're a little cutie. I don't even know what the hell you are. You're like a little baked potato vendor, dude. Look at this little potato, right? Now, I could buy DNA, permanent progression. Give me. I could buy a support mutation. Gimme. Bouncing bullets. Your main weapon marks enemies. Deflecting bullets bounces between all marked enemies. Sounds good. We have homing laser. Dashing fires a laser at a nearby enemy. Now both of these work for getting towards our healing bullets. However, bouncing bullets sounds like really good crowd control and also opens up the left side here. So what I need to get in order to keep my bullets alive is one, build up along here and get a second row going or just find an upgrade here that goes up left. So it's going to, it's going to color my decisions in the future. Buy some more upgrade stuff right there. It'll color my decision in the future, but you know, I'm okay with that. Now this right here, this particular thing, the DNA ore, we can get some more permanent upgrade for unlocking new new mutations. Chance find non deflected bullets, same ones we had before. Lots of dashing dudes. Look at all these little dashing dudes. I'm going to pop the double boomers and, and blow them up. Yep, blow them up. Big damage, big damage. We love to see it. Annoying dashing guy. Look at all these yellow orbs, by the way. We've got some... A lot of these yellows on the screen. Remember, you can't deflect yellow. We've got to... We actually have to avoid yellow. And it's very aggressively annoying 
when there's this many yellows on the screen. Normally you get maybe one or two, maybe even three at the worst elite enemies at once. And they fire like 50% red, 50% yellow. But then you get rooms like these challenge rooms that just add a whole big fat wrench into the works and make it just a little bit more difficult than it would otherwise be. No. All these yellows, dude. No, die. Die. Let's pop the second boomerang. Yo, that's a lot of yellows spinning at me. Hello. Big damage, though. We're killing dudes fast. And yes, I, I know it's probably redundant to say now that we're, like, more or less, like, I don't know, a little bit under halfway into the run. I am aiming my boomerang. You can see that if I bounce my boomerang in the wrong direction, it'll go in whatever direction I'm aiming it in. So for the boomerang guy especially, it adds that different level of skill. You're, you need to get used to it. You need to get used to it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. There is some uh, learning to be done. You will have to get used to the game's mechanics. You're not gonna pick this up and be the best that ever was. Uh, nothing's ever gonna keep you down. You will have to learn. But I appreciate that. I love it. I love the unique direction this is going in. I love the music. I love the kinetic action, dude. There's the mark. Bounce that guy. I just, I, I love ideas. It's like, it's an isometric bullet hell row where, where you are in control of bouncing away enemies projectiles and you can use your enemies attacks against them. It's basically a glorified parry. So, I mean, think about it. It's, it's a parry, right? You know me and parries. Me and parry go way back. Parry was my best friend in school. Uh, big elite getting blown up right there thanks to the double boomerang. Big damage. You love to see it. Oh, just die, dude. Just just die. Be, be incinerated. Who is... Whoa! I'm here thinking who is left? A lot of you, apparently. Uh, no. Die. All right. Bones! There we go, the bones are here. Or Bodyguard, dashing summons a clone that deflects bullets. But, you know, the bones are fun, plus the bones go up, and I, I would love to get this. Let's get that instead. Now, I will show you the bones when the bones actually rocks up, but for now, we have to move on to another challenge room. Enemies fire bullets at you when they die. So, when they die, they, they explode out an arc of bullets. It's about as annoying as it sounds. You can see the bullets are flying out when they blow up. It's... It's... Oh, bone, bone. If I deflect the bone projectile thingy while it's on the screen, uh, it goes in the direction that I aim it in and does a lot of damage. But it's another skill shot thing. It wants you to get good at it, get good at aim. I'm just going to fire this in a random direction. And oh, we got someone. We got a frog dude. Nice. Sometimes I'll see things like that and I'm just like, you know what? Don't waste it. Let's just throw it out there and see if it travels across the screen. I'm, I don't know why I'm fighting this guy from across the laser. Oh, oh I walked into it. He... He died, he, he exploded out some projectiles, and that's on me because I'm not used to the enemy doing that. I'm used to the enemy's pattern, and what they do, I've learned the enemies, I've, I've spent some time actually practicing the game, and oh, there we go, again, same problem. I thought to myself, he's dead, I can walk forward. No, because the stupid, I should say stupid, I'm an idiot, because the, the challenge criteria got me, you know? Haha, -ha, you fell for it, enemies die, they shoot out projectiles. It got you, dude. You got got. Now, next area. Like I said, if you get really good at this... Oh my god. Lots of deflect right there. You love it. Ah, oh, seeing lots of red on the screen, dude. Normally in bullet hells, you see lots of red on the screen. You think to yourself, oh, this is a nightmare. No, dude. In this game, you see lots of red on the screen. It's, it's, it's a thing of beauty. You love to see it because you know full well that's a big ton of damage that you can send right back to your opponents. And it feels so good. Now, we're only about, what, three three spaces away from the boss fight? I can take this health orb room and get some life back. That'd be lovely. Oh, 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 I see laser fence thing coming towards me. There's two on the screen. Yep, they're alternating. I see, I see. Destroy this guy real quick. I'm going to activate my special. I'm going to activate my special. Shoot bones. This frog thing is going to keep going underground and being really annoying. I'm going to follow the lightning wall so I get as much time as possible without having to deal with it. But it's going to come back soon. Yeah, there it is. If I come up here, can I... Oh. Shoot the bone in his face. Big double boomer. Go. Double boomerang. Go. Double boomerang. Go. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to sit there and, and not get hit, but I, I took a risk, dude. 
Nice. Blow up. Someone over here. Bone. Ah oh, man, I thought my bone was going to get it. And my super is already back. My, my special move, it's already off cooldown again. The more you deflect, the more it comes back. Grab this life orb for 33 life up. We're almost back to full life. Continue along, go to the cell orb. Like I said, if you guys enjoy Deflector, I will be more than happy. In fact, I'll be keen to show you guys what all the other characters are like, how they play. The next character on the list would be the sword guy, my personal favorite. The sword guy is really, really cool. Um, followed by the gun dude, then finally Spark, and Spark, I'm not gonna lie, probably the hardest character in the entire game to use. You think this looks difficult to manage? You have not seen anything until you see Spark. But Spark has an interesting way to play, I'll, I'll give it that. Spark is, is, is different. Different for sure. Now, in terms of their challenges, um, my boomerang dude here, for example, has challenges like kill a certain number of enemies without catching the boomerang, or no. Kill, what is it, five enemies in a single throw? So get five enemies low and then just go whoosh and have five dudes die from one throw. You've got another one where it's, I think, deal 8,000 damage without catching your boomerang. I actually don't know how I got that one done. I think it was blind luck. But basically throw it out there and then just don't catch it. Just keep bouncing it. You would need to go through a lot of the room and you can do things like throw it out there and, and of course, then get hit by everything because you're trying to, trying to prove a point and then start running away from your, from your boomerang and hoping that it doesn't catch up to you and that you can lead it through enemies. But there are a lot of like fun, challenge -y ideas. Oh look, another life room so I can get back my life that I lost by trying to be, be uh, uh, a show off and try and run away from my boomerangs and have them do work for me. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, boomers go out. Damage goes in. No. 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 Ah, oh, it's so good, dude. It's There's a certain level of just, just raw satisfaction from shooting a projectile back at an enemy who shot it at you in the first place and watching them explode. Like, it's... it's Ah, oh, it's so nice. Uh, bone attack, go. Did I get him? Not even close. Da, 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 da. Music going in. I'm gonna get out of the way of that. Oh, deflect those bullets. We've got a lot of red on the screen. A lot of red on the screen. Like I said, a lot of red means a good thing. Well, it could also be mad. I mean, don't get hit by the red, but you want to bounce the red back. That's the whole objective. Deflect. Deflect, deflect, deflect. Now, important to mention, if you would like to try out Deflector, there is basically a free prequel demo called Deflector... Is it, is it um, Deflector Sample Zero? Mission Zero? There is... Uh, a demo, basically, an entire different client, a different game, basically, that serves as a prequel. And if you like Deflector enough and you pick up the main game, beating the prequel version will give you a skin for the main dude right here that we have now, Boomerang Guy. Um, so check it out if you want to have a look into the game's mechanics. Here he is, boss fight of this area, and, and have a good time with it. Now, this big dude, he's, he's actually, like, one of the more difficult bosses because his fight becomes really hectic as it progresses. He spins, he walks, he shoots out these little drones that, that hover around. And as the drones hover around... Oh, deflect his bullets. As the drones hover around... I was trying to get the bone thing there. Oh, there it is. They will shoot out yellow orbs, and, and he starts shooting out more yellows as time goes on. He starts moving along with his attacks. We are doing a lot of damage though, I gotta be honest, we are doing a lot of damage. Deflect all those out the way and then dash through it. And just in general, he becomes a pain. He becomes a real pain. Although, he is taking a lot of damage. Is this is this the, the special phase? It is. Okay, so these little drones, you can bounce them away, but they're just running around dropping yellow. Look at this zigzagging yellow nonsense. No, 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 no. Get out of there. If you knock the drones into him, it does damage. So you're incentivized to try and and ping-pong his own allies into him. Or just, really, again. I've never tested, can I hurt you? I can't hurt you from here. I'm just gonna sit in this corner and try and play it safe. Oh, 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 no, get away, get away, get away. Little yellow dudes. Oh, he's gonna run away and do the line work again. I just walked into a yellow. I got, I got got. There we go, get rid of him. Grab our plus five permanent progression upgrades. He's dead, he zips out of there. We exit the world, back to the main hub. Run down here and get our life up. Juice it up. Back to full. 140 max life. We've got one area left to go in. The sea. Now, 
It is important for me to let you know now that once you finish an area, you cannot return to it. So in your journal, some of these missions, for example, are ordered. We figured out that we can do, you can always do Treasure Island along with one other one if you wanted to get two done at once, but you can only realistically get maybe one per run done because you may not be aware of getting the other ones done at the same time. But the order in which you do the areas can lead you to completing quests. So for example, this one saps, I helped the little creature with a sword defeat a big robot in magnetic fields. We just beat the big robot in magnetic field. So in order to get this quest done, you want to follow it in order. Now, it won't show you the order when you first start playing. You'll basically be out to discover these missions on your own, and you'll fill in the blanks. And once you figure out, okay, do I do it A, B, C, or do I do it B, C, A? What order do I do these areas in in order to complete these quests? And once you figure it out and complete the quest, you'll start unlocking really cool stuff. Now, your main weapon has a chance to deflect bullets or... Deflecting releases three lines of bones in a cone shape. The bones damage enemies. This is really good synergy with our burst because deflect burst already shoots out a cone shaped damaging area in front of us. So it just gives us more good stuff for that. We can stick it here and get more benefits for our healing bullets and keep it alive with this panel right here. Now, part of a quest. This will always be here in the sea. Pick up the drog egg. And the idea with the drog egg is that it acts as a please don't take too much damage uh, precaution. This is part of a quest here. What you need to do is take the dog egg to this objective spot in this little village. If you can get all the way over to this little village spot without like losing the egg, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, the egg breaks by taking too much damage. Just don't take too much damage and the egg won't break. If you take too much damage, the egg breaks and you can't complete the quest. Complete the quest and you'll get rewards for it. Sound fair? Okay, good. Good luck. Let's do our best to not take too much damage while in the, the toxic sea. And we will see if we can get to the village and complete the egg quest. And get some special rewards for it. You can see a toxic meter down here. You stand in the bad stuff, you don't immediately take damage. Instead, that meter fills. If the meter fills all the way to the max, you will take, I think, 20 life damage. Um, which is really bad, and I, I would imagine might be a guaranteed egg breaker as well. Um, you can also just triple dash all the way across if you want to just jump these gaps in one motion. We have a big elite spider crab looking looking bro over here. Um, die. Die. Reflect. Die. Grab our rewards and move on. Now this is the third area in the run. We've already done the first two. So this being the third area, it's not going to hold back on us now. We're going to get some, some trouble. And we've got to be really careful. And I, I actually find the 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 Toxic Sea to be the most difficult normal area to go through. For boss fights, I find the robot guy that we beat in, in the second area in the Magnet Fields a little bit more difficult than the boss in this area now. I'm more used to the boss in this place. But... Oh, here we go. Deflect Mutation gives us more over here. But... Um, the area itself is definitely what I think is more difficult. For sure. Come down here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These like weird dragonfly flying enemies. They shoot out big groups like clusters of red that just make for the perfect fodder, dude. You, you can just... Look at this. Oh, bounce it all back. Send it back. Send it to them. And you do get a lot of deflect upgrades in your mutation tree that can do things like, you know, we've already gone over some. You can get a shield if you deflect five in a row. It'll tell you how many you've deflected at once. So I'll say like deflect three right there, deflect deflect nine. We deflected nine bullets in one button right there. Badass. And you get different benefits as you do these. We've already seen that I have a, a chance to fire off projectiles. I've not seen these projectiles. I think they shoot really, really fast. I'm going in the wrong direction. Hello, little squid man. Little squidman thing. Die. But you get a lot of benefits. There are, there are some builds that, that oh, they do so much damage if they focus on, on deflection. Because by the time you get to the end of your run, the game likes to throw so many enemies on the screen at you that just deflect spamming a lot of a lot of enemies' bullets back becomes really simple. It's just a matter of, oh god, there's a lot of problems. Bounce it, bounce it, bounce it all. Die. 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 Big elite frog guy. Oh, music's kicking in, dude. Music is going in. This personality, these areas, they all have a different soundtrack to them. They all sound beastly. Bounce it. Bounce it. Bounce it. Keep it bouncing. Keep it bouncing. Keep it going at them. 
It's a dance. It's a dance. There's an ebb. There's a flow. There's a feeling to it. There's a groove. It's almost like the music is leading you, dude. Like a rhythm game, but not quite. But it can feel like it sometimes. It's weird. It's weirdly mesmerizing and a little bit too satisfying at times. Don't get touched by that red. I'm doing my best to, to schmoove around and not get too too comfortable standing in one area. You stand in one spot too long, they're going to box you in. At this point in the run, I need to keep on my toes. Oh, oh. Alright, alright. Having said that, I'm sitting in this corner for a long time, but that's because these dudes also like to spit out a lot of projectiles that I can take advantage of. So lightning strike or deflect burst, it no longer matters. We're about to get the last five out of five. And then after that, you can just stick them wherever you want because there's nothing else to worry about. However, in the future, I do imagine they'll stick more than just two of these uh, special grid ones on the on the uh, the overall grid. They'll put maybe like two or three in there um, extra so that you can continue to work towards a complete build. We could take more deflect burst for more damage. Lightning strike, enemies hit by a deflect bullet have a chance to be struck by lightning. Well, I like the idea of playing God. I want to be Zeus. Let's go. Give me that lightning. We've got a lot of currency, so moving our way. Permanent upgrades. Enemies spawn a blood bomb when they die. Nice. The idea of going towards the shop is appealing to me right now. Leeches. Oh my god, we've got leeches. These things that connect a line to me. They're sucking my blood, dude. They want my blood. These are kamikaze dudes. We've gone over them before. The little blood bombs, they spawn. They run at you. It sucks. We don't like dealing with them. I'm going to zip over here. Get both my boomerangs out. Start bouncing them. Try and get up, oh, frog guys. I told you, they'll spawn behind you. They'll come after you. It sucks. No. Little, little, no. 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 Don't do it, little dude. Don't do it, little guy. They're everywhere, dude. I'm going to get hit by one. I can feel it. I don't want to lose my... Am I even on track for the village? I've, I've lost track of what I was doing as far as the quest. I forgot that I'm meant to be going towards the village to hand in the egg. Oh. Uh, you guys don't want to come over here, do you? No? I have to come over to your island? Okay, but my island was cool. My island was barely inhabited. That means it was a fun place to be, right? Boom. Get it. Get it. Get it. Bounce it. Bounce it. Bounce it. Bounce on it. Bounce with it. Be, be one with the groove. Die. Die, frog thing. Oh, wait. Little, little dude. Little dude's dead. More spawns? Yeah. Like I said, the game now wants me dead. It's going to throw more and more and more enemies at me because it wants me to perish. Bit of a contrast from the very... Oh, I got touched right there. That's my, like, what, first hit that I've taken so far. I don't know if it's based on overall damage that you've taken or if they want to base it on on number of hits taken. Actually, I think it's damage taken because I've been hit once and had my egg break before, so I think it's based on the damage you take. And because I got hit by one little ball there, I'm hoping that... Look at all of these kamikaze guys. So many little bombs, dude. There we go. Get rid of them. So many in one spot. I've I've bursted an entire cluster of enemies, and it's just resulted in lots of bombs. Doesn't matter. Grab this DNA. We're out of here. Uh, the shop. And seeing as how we're past the first objective, the next one is only... Yep, yeah, not too far away. Shop time. Let's run up here and grab... Ooh, I could get life. I've got a lot of money. I may as well just spend all of it. So let's get a mutation. Deflect mutation. Increase the damage by bullets that are deflected. Stick it anywhere. But it no longer really matters. We've maxed out all the uh, the main two. I don't know what we would call these. These these main triggers, I guess you would call them. Is it, are they both called triggers? Deflect triggers, maybe? I'm going to go with that for now. Uh, offensive. Yep, more damage. Why not? And then some more permanent upgrades. 65 more DNA stuff when we get back outside to upgrade our character more. I could take either direction here. Let's take... They're both challenge rooms, though, and that, that kind of sucks. Let's get a support room going. Enemies eventually teleport to a random location. Oh, that's not too bad. Mobile enemies. Um, yeah, mobile enemies sounds bad, but really... They're already kind of moving around a lot, but teleporting... I mean... Let's be honest, I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that it doesn't become as much of an issue as it sounds like. And that I can, yep, keep on top of it and stay on my toes and just keep bouncing my boomerangs at them, dude. Just keep bouncing boomerangs and keep reflecting the reds. Keep reflecting the reds, dude. Just keep doing it. Keep reflecting those reds. If it's red, make them dead. If they're yellow, let it mellow, dude. Don't touch it. Just leave it alone. Get around it. Boom. 
dude that 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 funky guitar it's it's so funky dude the waka waka's are with us oh 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 toad monster thing they're dude it's bad enough that they're already like the kind of enemies that go underground and reappear next to you but to give them a teleporting passive at the same time yep he's behind me again be real be real now you can't be real I just got hit by an orb from behind. See, look look at these guys. These guys are a problem, man. Hang on, throw more. Oh, orb from behind. Oh, he's, he's next to me. The sad part is we're really close to the village. I'm going to zip around the back. I know I'm walking through sludge, but as long as that sludge meter doesn't fill up, we're fine. I can afford to, to use it as a resource, dude. I'm allowed. I'm allowed to dip my toes in the sludge as long as I don't stay in too long. It's, you know, five second rule, except it's probably like a seven second rule. I, I didn't see how fast it was building up, but you know, I feel as though we're okay. Uh, you watch there be more dudes spawn. If there's more dudes, oh my God. Please don't be more dudes. Where's this enemy? Where'd he go? Further down? Oh, he's teleporting around, that's why. Die. Ah, overcharge. We got another another special one. Good. Every time you deflect, you charge one bullet. When you dash, your charged bullets are released. I've had this one before. It is very strong, very fun, very cool. We've got two specials. This might be the first time I've had two special mutations in the same run. So, I mean, clearly you guys are good luck. Clearly recording. Very good luck. It's also good damage. It's a very solid uh, run for Boomerang right now. And I apologize that I don't call him by his actual designated name, but... I'm the kind of dude, I find a nickname for someone, if I like it, I like it. And I, I identify this guy by his weapon, and it is a boomerang. And and being an Aussie, I, I, I feel the need. Not that I've ever thrown a boomerang in real life, as if I have. I've, I've never. However, I feel as though boomerang dude is on a, on a kindred level with me right now. Bones! Oh, we hit someone right there. I, I know we did. I felt it. I felt the vibrations, dude. I felt the vibration in the nation. Yep, yep. You guys want to sit there and, and play long-range pokes? I'll play long-range pokes all day. Dude, look at the bones, look at the burst, look at the damage. Oh. It's yellow, let it mellow. Don't touch it. This elite dude's shooting those yellows at me. And these big dudes bouncing their balls all over the screen. Excuse me, sir, your balls are impeding on my personal space. Would you mind removing your balls? Get some, get some, get some, get some, get some. Throw another boomerang. Just dual boomerang. Call me the captain, dude. Boomerangs everywhere. Oh. Damage. Okay, someone is alive somewhere. Where? Where are you? Oh, my dear sweet lord. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna I'm zip around the other side, because there is a lot of dudes left over here. This whole island is populated. Hello. Hello. Local wildlife. I, I would like to make this place not populated anymore. I would like to exterminate the residents. So that I may... Aha, come down here for the life orb because I have to get to that village. We still have our egg intact. Please do not crush my... No, stop, 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 stop. It's touching me. It's touching me, dude. It's, it's touching me. I don't like it. God, it got scary right there. Those leeches are annoying, dude. Oh, leeches are a problem. No, frog thing. Go away. Shoot the bone towards this guy right here. Oh, uh, another leech. Oh, I'm about to get my toxic meter built up too high. I'd rather not. There we go. There we go. I was playing a bit greedy there, but it's okay. Okay, this frog's going to be a pain in my rear end, right? No? Okay, good. Die. Are you going to be a pain? Are you going to be an issue for me, dude? Good. Die. Alright, toxic meter has gone back down. Oh, no. He better not be out there. Sometimes frogs will just teleport way off screen and go out in the distance. Yep, he has, hasn't he? Wait, no, there's one here. I can get this one first. It's happened a couple of times now, and I swear, dude, he's going to make me work for it, isn't he? I can't really fight you out there, dude. All right, give me, give me a second. I need to find some sturdy ground that I can get to when I'm over there. All right, he came a little bit closer. He's come back. He's come back. I waited like like 10 seconds. I was going to go out there when my poison meter went down, but he came towards me. 
And of course we get more dudes spawning in. And one of their balls hit me. This is what I get for dropping my guard, dude. I was fighting a single frog. I was, I was, I left, I left tactical mode and I went, I, I left aggressive mode and I went into tactical mode. I was thinking about how I was going to get that frog monster thing. And this is what I get as a reward. I get, I get ganged up on by a bunch of dudes spawning out of nowhere. I'm not ready for it. And they're all spitting balls in every direction. Look at these guys. Look at, this, look at these balls, dude. There's so much red on the screen. Thankfully, the red is my friend. The red is my friend. Life up. 33 life, not necessary. One more room to go, and then we're at the village. And then we can say quest complete. But I'm actually kind of anxious. I've been hit a couple of times so far. I'm thinking that maybe I don't have much room, much uh, wiggle room left for... Oh, dude. Push it. Uh, for getting hurt. So let's try and clean this room up without incident, huh? Let's do some of that. Push it. Bones. Push it. Oh, dead. Can I introduce you to my friend, the boomerang burst? Please. Perish. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get some. Oh, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. I will say immediately, it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but stuff like this, dude, it's, it's just, it's fun. I like games that just understand fun. They're just like, we've got an idea. It's going to be tough to learn, but incredibly satisfying once you learn it. It's so good. Throw. Bounce, bounce, bounce. I highly recommend moving backwards as you're doing stuff like this. My instinct is always to move forward, and sometimes that works like this. Run into it. Run into it. Run into it. Run into it. And he's dead. However, for bigger groups of enemies where there's just so many projectiles on the screen, you need to get your bearings. I recommend running backwards as you're deflecting. Like, like, juke them. Dance them like this. See? Dance them. Dance them. Dance them. Keep them chasing after you. Keep... You gotta, you gotta play hard to get, you know? You gotta keep them interested, you know? Don't give out the deets straight away. You gotta keep them guessing. Deflect. 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 We're teenagers on Twitter. We're deflecting. We're deflecting. We're deflecting. Shoutouts to reusing an old joke that I used on stream. I love it though, it's a fun one, I like saying it, so I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> get some, get some, die. There's our 50 monies, our 50 resource, and we made it. Here we are in the village, we can complete a quest. This is where I would have brought the jailer NPC that I tried to show you guys before, but we've already done it, which leads me to believe he might be at home already. Now this giant thing here, let me just shoot those bones out the way. This giant, damn, they actually go full screen. This giant monstrosity has these eggs right here, and he's. Uh, this is a, a, a beautiful, most sexy looking hungry alien thing right here that wants to eat and will only leave if we bring it this very rare and special egg. No way! You're walking around with one of those? Give it the egg. She takes off and leaves, doesn't want to sit here eating in front of this guy's house anymore. We can come inside the house. This is where you would bring the guy, but our quest is done. He doesn't come here anymore. Bam, we get some free resources for permanent upgrades. Now, I say free, the only condition is that you don't break the egg on the way. But, assuming you don't break the egg, and you play well enough, yep, free. That's how it works, you know? It's like saying, you know, you work for it, so it's like, yeah. Uh, groceries are free, you just have to work for them, get money, and then trade for them, right? That, that's practically free, right? Yes, my analogies are brilliant. I graduated from the highest school of meteorology. I minored in German. And I taught... I taught... <gasps> I just got hit bad by that. I taught lectures on examples and, and philosophical discussion on using really, really good exaggerated stories to get your point across. Uh, no, 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 die. My goodness. Bones. Oh, that does so much damage. New spawns. Big double boomer time. Yellow. I want to kill this big elite one that's in my face. So I stopped having to see yellows. Now that all the elite ones are out of the way, I get hit. <laughs> now that all the elite ones are out of the way, I can just freely bounce reds. Look, I can just walk around and bounce. I, okay, I need to aim my bounce so I don't get hit in the side. But I can just freely walk around and bounce if I want. Forget the boomerang. Look, let's bounce into his face. Bounce into his face. Oh, he's gonna spit at me. 
This little dude's spitting his stuff. Bounce. 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 Oh, look. Bones. Wow. Did that actually... Was the needle threaded against me right there? Did it actually bounce all around them except at them? Dude, the spread on that was really, really... Uh-huh. Bones. It was really against me right there. Hang on. Let's pop the second booms. Big booms, dude. Big booms. Throw the booms. Just die, son. Oh. Oh. Nice. 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 Feels good, dude. Second boomer. Kill the elite. Bones. Fire the bones. Deflect the reds. Deflect the boomerangs. And he's dead. And more spawns. They know. The game knows. The game is all like, he's still not dead? No, I'm not dead yet. Don't plan on dying. I plan on going the distance. My first deflector video is going to be a massive success. We're going to finish the run. We're going to beat the game. I'm going to show you guys the power of, of, of... The power of my country, dude. The boomerang. When you throw the boomerang, do you know the boomerang doesn't make a whoosh sound? It makes a mate, 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 mate sound as it spins through the air, dude. You can hear it coming from a, from a mile away because you just hear this encroaching, and it gets closer and closer. That's why when you hear that, you start ducking. If you ever wonder why Australians duck when they hear someone cry out, mate, that's why they're afraid they're about to get hit in the head. True story. We grow up learning this as children. That is not doing any damage. I need to actually get up there and hit him. There we go. Deflect. 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 Death. Spit bones. Oh, it's it's an elite one. Oh, nice. You're gonna spit yellow at me, aren't you? Okay, sir. Sir. Thank you. Die. Life up. There we go. Second to last... Well, last normal room, but... We finish this up, and then we go and fight the boss, and we'll have finished all three areas. Provided I don't die to the boss, but I don't feel like I will, you know? I'm just, I'm just going to decide. Since I, I rig everything, every game, every run that ever has been, I've decided I'm not going to die this time. I've decided that I'm going to I'm gonna live, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm just deciding that. Ow! I also decided to get hit there. That was my, my complete choice, my own volition, you know? It, it was gamer's choice to, to get hit there. I swear. I swear, you frog monsters. Please die. The balls are in my in my way. They're in my way. Get your balls out of my way. Oh, balls. Look at this monstrosity in my way. Uh, froggy thing. I have no idea what this is meant to be. By the way, I want all of you to, to as you've been watching through, um, knowing full well that the game is kind of like this pseudo petri dish of of germs and biological creatures and stuff like that. Can I? No, nope, I'm going to take damage. Ow. Okay, well, there's an example of toxic damage. Because this frog is actually getting further away. He's actually getting further away now. Because he's trying to run away from me. And there he is. See, look, look at him. Look at him. Come here, son. Is he getting closer? Okay, now he's getting a bit closer. I can lure him. Come on. Over this way. I want you guys to take guesses as to what you believe each of the, like, things are. What they represent, right? So what are all these organisms? What are these supposed to be? Are they real, real-life representations of things? Like, you know, different types of, like, amoeba, germ, single-celled organisms, etc. What do we think these are? Do we think they're pathogens? Do we think they're viruses? Do we think that they're what? Um, especially also for the magnetic fields where everything is a robot. What do we think all that is? Without looking up the law. Alright, that's the important part. You guys can't cheat. I want I want honest guesswork here. I want I want big brain thinkers to, to give an idea as to what's going on. And what are we? What are we supposed to be that we can actually mutate ourselves to uh to be better and more effective in combat? I wonder what we would have to be to be able to do that, huh? And what are we fighting against, right? All the fun questions. Die. Alright, I think a damage up is a good way to end this. Bam, get that big damage up.
I've lost 40 life thanks to stepping in Toxic, but that's okay. We come up here to the final boss fight. Zip, zip, zip. We come and stand over here, and it's a... That's right, it's a Hydra fight. Lots of tentacles, lots of bits and pieces that we get to fight. Bully the little tentacle thingies. Oh my god, a lot of... Oh, this is like the... Next to the, the Magnetic Fields boss, this is like the bullet hell. Where is... Oh, there they are. Yep. We need to kill all the little tentacles that spawn around the edges, and... Yep. Ow, I walked right... That one ball, dude. There was one ball. And I took it. I, I ran at it head first, dude. I, 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 that ball was in my face, and I, I, I'm like, yes, I will attack this ball. I'll attack it head on. We're doing a lot of damage though. Oh, avoid that. It's okay to go and step in the in the green for a little bit. Like I said before, you step in the green, you use it as a resource. You're allowed to step in it as long as you don't step in there for too long. It is A-OK. -okay. Because I think, you know, people panic and they think to themselves, holy crap, I can't stay. Oh, here we go. I can't stay out there for too long. That's dangerous. Nah, it's not as bad as you think it is. Ow. It's actually more dangerous to, to get greedy and try and dash across the screen to hit more and more tentacles that you probably shouldn't be going after because it's not safe yet. Break. Just keep smashing these tentacles, dude. Oh, they're gonna burst. They're gonna burst. They're gonna burst. 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 burst, burst, burst. There we go. Popping. Oh, from behind. Mm. Yes, yeah, see, this is the third fight out of all three of the areas. And so the fights definitely get harder or easier depending on what order you do them in. So this fight was a lot more difficult being the third area, but we still clench it. And like I said before, let's come and see how much life I get back. So I'm down 80. Hey, look at that, a full heal. There we go. My permanent upgrade has come in handy. Now, we have cleared all three of the areas. We have powered ourselves up. Our little uh, DNA table is as full as we're going to get it for now. Let us embark on the final challenge. Fighting off the infection. <gasps> the hub is infected. This giant pulsating mutated clot thing. Now what the clot? The yellow. Oh no. Oh wait. Red? What is this? Nanda. That is right. This clot thingy has the very unique trait that he changes the colors of orbs once they're uh, once they're already on the screen. Does that sound like it's like really, 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 really annoying? Yes, it is, but it's also really good at keeping you on your toe. Oh my god, on your toes. Sometimes it's best just to just to dash through. He's it's doing that thing where it's you've conditioned yourself to hand. Oh my god, right as you see, I walked into it. I went to to parry it. Oh, stand on the line. Stand on the line. Stand on the line. Avoid the yellow balls barrage. Yellow balls barrage. Won't get that in Pokemon. No, not the no, not not the little, not the little. Oh, the little little circles are annoying, dude. This boss has quite the attacking pattern. Yes, yes. If you get a chance, ah, if you get a chance to get rid of them, get rid of them. You can actually knock them all away when they're red. Easy to do when they're in a small, tight circle. Do it. Just shut up and do it. I see bones, dude. All right, knock them all away. Knock them all away. I'm crowd controlling right now, dude. I'm, I've got to get rid of these. These. Yep. Start clearing some while they're red. Remember, this also helps for cooldowns. If you're looking to to get your see my special is back off cooldown now. Keep deflecting and lowering your cooldowns. And keep throwing the double boomerangs and keep that damage fat. Ow. Oh dude, they're oh dude, they're oh dude, they're everywhere. Oh my god. I need I need ah oh, I need to just like take a step back for a second and assess my situation real quick. Okay, that was not only was it yellow, it just walked at me slowly and menacingly, and I just sat there for it. Alright, he's almost dead. He's almost dead. There we go. One final double boomerang ricochet. Cut the title screen. Deflector! Deflector early access has been completed.
More content will be added to the experiment very soon. Thank you very much for participating in the Deflector experiment. The console will shut down in three seconds. Massive shoutouts to the dev team and the, in the, the, the devs, the publishers, everyone involved in this. This is a lot of fun. You can see the final breakdown duration of uh, test number 18. That's, that's, yep, that's nice. Threats eliminated, uh, lethal threats eliminated, four. Uh, that's our boss count, I'm pretty sure. Mutations, areas cleared. Efficiency, 99%. I don't know what we have to do to get 100% efficiency. I dare say that's like a secret boss, maybe, that gives us 100% efficiency. And here, I've unlocked Spiral Strike. Deflecting releases a small wave around you that deals damage. So this is where you research your mutations using your permanent progression uh, crystal sample thingies. And the idea is, as you can see, as you upgrade them, the cost gets steeper. I've got 15 left. So if I drop all 14 in here, we unlock a new potential... Uh, uh, support mutation. Killing an enemy has a chance of generating an area that reduces the speed of bullets. A slow time area. That's kind of cool. And now it's up to 17. I've been upgrading these slowly but surely. It continue. We finish doing that. We come back into the main area. I tab over to research and we can use our DNA that we've collected. I've got 950 to further upgrade in here. I'm trying to max out immunity, which is all the survivability stuff. So I do have a second life. I didn't trigger my second life. I'd come back with 50% life. Very similar to Skull's uh, Resurrection. You know, most games have multiple lives. Uh, down here, Enhanced Healing Stream. So this will give us 10% more life from the Healing Station hub in between boss fights. But as we saw, I wasn't really hurting for healing from there much. Increase the efficiency of healing orbs, though. Might be kind of nice. That way, whenever we take a healing room, they heal for more. I've got 200 left. There's not really much I want to get anywhere else. We come out, and like I said before, if we wanted to, uh, I can cover the sword, gun, and spark if you guys want. But with all of that said and done, I've got to get out of here. I hope you guys have enjoyed some deflector action, and I will see you all next time. Have a good one.